What's up guys and gals, it's Groover back here, bringing you guys the latest behind the bar reviews for Yona of the Dawn, chapter 178. So, this chapter, okay, I gotta really, like, I gotta wait, because I feel like a lot of the time, the scanlations, every single time I've been reading, like, I, I complained, I think it was last, uh, last month, uh, or last release, I was complaining about the, uh, the lack of, of good art and stuff, but then when I go back, all of a sudden the shading is there, the proper lines are drawn and stuff, so I just think it's poor scanlations, and it's like a quick, here's our rough, like clean, but rough, and then they go back and they add like the shading parts or something like that, or they clean it up, because I read this uh, last night when it like dropped, I, I think it was, um, I don't know, my time, it was almost midnight, it dropped, and I felt, once again, I'm like, the art style is really lacking right now, it feels more like line drawings, and uh, there was still shading in color, or color, like black, and the designs on Kija, and, and the advisor, and stuff like that, but then, afterwards, coming back, before doing this review, I realized, no, this is nice and polished, This, you know, the characters look good, and stuff like that, I just feel like, it's... I don't know. I I don't know. Maybe I'm just overtired when I'm reading the damn things, and then I get over it, and then I read it like when I'm fully awake, and then I I look at it in a different light. I don't know what's happening. Anyways, um, that being said, Yona the Dawn, chapter one hundred seventy eight, also known as Akatsuki no Yona. So this lovely monthly release, which is one of my uh, current favorite running series, I'm curious about the direction that this series is taking right now. I'm very curious because as I said at the end of chapter one hundred seventy seven. It would seem just plausible, like Yona will completely reject this. Why would they ever work with the, with the orchestrator of King Il's death? Or assassination, murder, call it what it is. Then I, I said they wouldn't bring this up. They wouldn't bring this up if there wasn't going to be something else involved. And this whole chapter, the first half of the chapter, I'll just quickly go over it, because um, I don't want this review to like carry on and on and on, uh, is that... It boils down to the fact that the advisor makes a good argument, so to speak, but you know that this guy is a conniving, cunning some bitch. You know that. You know he was responsible. He even outright states it like Yona brings up a number of times, but see, he drags into her fear because Yona has been captured. So he's like, "What? What do you mean an alliance? Why would we ever ally with you?" And then. Uh, you know, he says, well, we did it with the Thunder Beast, you know, the Lightning Beast of Koka, or Kuka, whatever the kingdom's called, and um, we did that before, right? We, we worked together, and Kija brings up is like, yeah, we only did that because we needed to save the other members of our group, our dragons, and Yona was ki kidnapped at the time. Our, you know, our desires, our goals align for a moment. That doesn't mean we trust you, that doesn't mean we allied with you, it doesn't mean we want to work with you. This was just a common goal sort of idea. And that makes sense. And then the advisor, like, he digs his claws into Yona's, uh, like, like her mental state right now because she is realizing that a lot of the time the dragons, when they're kidnapped and stuff, like, all the situations that happen, always there seems to be, like, a dragon or herself or Yon or somebody's in trouble. There's always somebody captured, somebody injured, somebody in trouble. They're always on the run. But... See, she's not looking at, at the glasses half full. She's looking at the glasses half empty. She's looking at this and going, okay, I'm always putting them in danger. She's like, no, but you're saving places. Like the whole Zing Kingdom incident. Like Sai. Like the, the Fire Tribe Rebellion. Like um, saving the Fire Tribe in general, let's just say. Um, all these different things. Yes, there has been consequences to these actions, but look at what has come out of it. You are all safe. You are all fine. And you become stronger and better for it. And now there are places, there are villages in the fire truck. There's Awa, where, um, of course, the Nadia incidents, you know, uh, in the water tribe. All these things have now been solved because of your guys' endless amount of involving yourselves, trying to do good things and sacrifice. But she's not thinking about any of that. She's not thinking about a word of that. What she's thinking about is that advisor, that key soak. He's just digging his claws into her and being like, how long can you think you can protect the four dragons? Now they're well known, right? See, that's the problem. Their, their fame went up and up. They're no longer just the darkness dragon and the happy hungry bunch, you know, just a bandit tribe going around do-gooders. Do no, they have involved themselves multiple times in countrywide affairs, tribe-wide affairs, and it's become a, a big thing that they can't be ignored anymore, and they don't want, of course, the advisor just doesn't want an insurrection. He's like, we can't kill them, but we don't need them against us, because right now, they are more popular than the masses. Yona is looked at as King Hiryu, and, uh, or Hiraku, what, uh, how do you say his name? Hiru? 
King Hiryu. Anyways, Hiryu. Anyways, um, he basically, you know, so she's looked down as a god. Of course, the four dragons are revered in, in the land of, uh, in their kingdom and stuff like that. So there's, there's this mentality of his. It, it benefits him. And he even talks to Joe So, uh, later on. Like he, and I mean, the general of the Sky Tribe brings up, it's like, yo, this is not a good idea. Hawk will not back down. He's, he takes too much time in front of his majesty. He'll kill him. He will attempt to kill him. Like, he cannot be controlled. He is dangerous as hell. And we've seen Hawk been stopped by Yona at almost every stretch. But how much of his patience, how much of his bloodlust, how much of his own personal desires, when is it going to seep over that line? Like, it's one of those things where you don't tempt the beast, you know, sort of idea. You don't... You don't put a recovering alcoholic in a, in a bar situation. Like, oh, we need a job. Well, they could be a bartender. Why put yourself in that situation, right? It's the same idea. You don't do that to Hawk because it would be a very bad idea. It's, it's end up, I have a feeling right now, just the way it's going, is that there's going to be a bit of a breakdown in communication between Yona and Hawk. But suffice it to say, they all bring up the reasonings and, uh, Everyone's basically saying, no, we don't need uh, your protection and stuff like that. You know, Yona, we're fine. We don't need protecting. We protect you. That's our job, blah, blah, blah. But she's not listening. You can tell she's deeply affected by his words. And that's when uh, they bring up a few different things. They bring up the fact, like, Keija brought up the whole, like, we're not actually alive with you. We just needed to get Yona and the others back. Um, the next one to bring up something was Yona herself. Bringing, like, do you remember the night? Like, do you remember, like, I do not trust you. And, all, like, I just can't trust anything you say to me right now. And the fact of the matter is, is that you, um, you shot down Zeno and Jaiha and stuff. And, and the advisor just makes a, a platitude of, oh, my humblest apologies. Like, you're not sorry. If you had killed them, you would have been, like, awesome. So why that was even a thing is beyond me. And then, of course, Hawk brings up his big moment. He's like, do you remember the night you murdered our king? And he's like, yes, of course I do. It was our triumph. It was our victory night. Of course I did. And Hawk just bringing the glaive is at his throat. The glaive is there. And I'm like, just do it. Just do it. Just do it to do it. You guys have been on the run since the beginning. Everyone was trying to kill you before. They didn't succeed when it was two of you. Now you have the four damn dragons on your side. Plus yourself. You're prepared. Get rid of this poisonous, venomous snake of a Jafar ripoff. Get rid of him and move on. But no, of course, Yona's like, no, no. Don't do it. Don't do it. And that's when, um, so it becomes a tense situation. This is where, see, the problem is Kiso does bring up one very good point. I mean, you could argue the fact that they can't protect the four dragons. They can offer them protection shelter. So they wouldn't have to be on the run from the Sky Tribe or anybody anymore because they'd be allies. But the thing of the matter is, is that here's the big kicker. Here's the, here's the main point that you have to, you, you have to agree with this, is that the Fire Tribe Rebellion, the Nadi incidents, Awa, everything that's gone on, the war with Zing, the war with Sai, all these things would have crumbled and most likely have fallen to pieces with King Il in charge. That's a fact. And the Thunder Beast, of course, Hawk knows this. That's the painful part, is that that is most likely what would have happened. He would have given up land, he would have given up things. He would have given up more stuff. He would have lost the respect. He already lost the respect of most of the tribes. And there would have been way more death, way more casualties, and way more pissed off people. Yona and Hawk being kicked out of the castle, finding the four dragons and doing all the good they'd done, that wouldn't have been possible while the king was alive. So it's one of those things where you, you birth, uh, you know, success out of failure or success out of tragedy. You pick yourself up and you make, you know, you got lemon to make lemonade sort of idea. And right now, the lemonade's fresher than the lemons ever would have been sort of idea. So that cannot be denied. And that's a serious issue. Now, of course, you could go on the line and say, like I thought, it was like, yeah, but you could have just went with Hawk's idea. Suwon marries Yona. He becomes king anyways. And then... There's no betrayal and death and destruction and everything happens anyways. Could have. Um, I mean, of course, you would have had to wait and you probably would have waited too long. And of course, uh, King El did not approve of Su Wan. And we don't know the full extent now. We don't know the full backstory of everything that happened between them and why he had such disdain and why this, why that. So I really want to see that. Um, 
and the advisor after this talk is like, I'm leaving the day after tomorrow, so please think about this, blah, blah, blah. And of course, you're almost thinking about it. Then we see um, them talking in the tent, both the General and Sky Tribe and uh, the advisor. They're talking, and uh, Kisok basically, like, he digs his claws a little bit into Jojo there uh, as well. Because he says, uh, oh, General Jojo, uh, you know, you were kind of supposed to be the princess's bodyguard. And there were even rumors, not that I ever thought that Judo had um, any uh, feeling, romantic feelings towards Yona. Um, he, like, he's digging at him, like, like jab, 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 see what hits, you know, sort of idea, like, oh, you were picked over. Oh, you know, I heard that uh, he, uh, the previous king, Ill, he favored, you know, Hawk over you. And he even, he even, there were rumors of marriage between them and stuff. And I'm like, that, that was something started by Hawk, first of all, just to make Taijun go away. So, and Taijun even says, I haven't heard rumors or anything like that since you told me that ever. Nobody ever mentioned it. No one rumors, no nothing. So he's full of shit, but ah, like this guy is just like, please someone just take him out. He's the new Gobi, you know, like sort of idea. Um, you know, even though Gobi's kind of still alive, which like execute that dude. Anyways, uh, so after that, you know, we get that scene and that's where uh, Judo, of course, he also mentions like, no, Hawk cannot be controlled. That Thunder Beast will, you know, because Kisok's like, hey, you know, you'll finally get your chance to like take him out and stuff. And he's like, no, the, the hatred he has, the bloodlust towards his majesty is just, it's ice, it's sharp, it's cold. And that won't be extinguished. That won't be stopped, sort of idea. And we already knew that about Hawk. We know that. He hit Keija and Jeha just to get to him when he first saw him back, you know, sort of idea. So there's that. Um, anyways, the rest of the chapter, we should move on to that so this review stays semi-short. Here's where things kind of take a bit of a darker turn because once they all get back to the tent, everyone's like, of course we're going to reject him, that Kiso guy. He's just... He's wild with accusations and wild with this. He makes, like, everything, like, he's like, oh, yeah, we know we murdered your father, tried to kill all of you on multiple occasions, hurt you, injured you, chased you down, uh, attempted to kill the princess a second time. But, yeah, just forget all that. Forget it all, because we're, we're going to be buddies now, right? So, yeah, I can understand the entirety, the entirety of people's, like, like just, like, no, automatic no, but of course, as I pointed out earlier, there is some truth to what he's saying, and there would be benefits, and this is where uh, Hawk is stated to, he's been guarding outside, so the other dragons, they decide they'll guard the other four sections of the tent, I'm like, you know, the other three sides of the tent will be fine, guys, you could stay for this, but they're trying to have a conversation, and I always love Zeno's input, because Zeno is probably my favorite of the dragons, and he is just... Sometimes he just asks the real questions without any cause for like, like pussy putting around it, you know, sort of idea. And suffice it to say, Yona brings up the point first. She goes like, you know, Yon, you wanted to read all these books and you could study and blah, blah, blah. And Yon's trying to talk it down. Like, no, we do not need to go to Hyrule Castle. We do not need to do this, right? Um, and Yona says, you know, if they had wanted to kill me, all they would have had to do with that throat medicine is mix in a little poison, and that would have solved their problems, you know, but they didn't. So, but you can make the argument, of course, that Kisok even knows if, they, if he tries to murder Yona now, he's going to take the wrath of these five super powerful people that they cannot contend with. They will be casualties. Their kingdom will suffer greatly if they try to do any harm to Yona. So she's not really, this is the problem. She's not considering the other side. Kisok is, he even says to himself, like, this is a win, 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 win for all of us, all, everybody involved, you know, like, it's so many benefits on our side, that's why I extended the deal, they aren't discussing all the benefits it is to him, like, to not murder them and stuff, like, the, the ball's in their court, but they, they actually have, like, like, some team players on the other side, it's not like it's a domination, they're like, okay, we'll handicap our best players if you do this for us, you know, after the game, they are still playing at a decent, you know, game. There's good rivalry on the court, right? So, I but nobody's bringing that up, and you know, it's just and nobody's telling her otherwise. Sort of idea. They're all just saying, no, we can protect ourselves. We don't need to even listen to him. Nobody's bringing up the fact that this is all conniving on his side, um, which I found a little odd. And I expected Zeno to, but Zeno says something different. He basically says, yeah, I mean, he does bring some insight. He's like, yeah, basically, if we reject the deal, they will they'll come after us. That's a fact. They will send their assassins after us because we will be the biggest problematic, the unknown factor, the biggest 
issue in the ruler's current side will be the biggest thorn in their side. will be unpredictable, uncontrollable, and they won't know what to do with us. So that will put us in a very dangerous position for them and for ourselves. Now he also brings up the fact that, you know, he knows that he's going to be able to use the four dragons, keeping them close, all that stuff. He goes, four dragons, we've been used, we've always been used. You know, like, that's just the way it is sort of idea. And Yona, Yona doesn't like that. Zeno is just bringing up the real truth here. And he says, you know, are you ready to take the leap down to Sun Wan's feet? Like, he doesn't say, like, are you ready to forgive Sun Wan or something? No, he says, you will be groveling at his feet. Are you ready to do that sort of idea? Like, forgive everything. And remember, like, here's the thing. The murder of the father, the murder of the king might have been justified. Might have been justified for the good of the kingdom, right? That point can be argued back and forth, back and forth. They can hate it, hate him for it, but the truth is the truth. The problem I have is that they attempted to murder Hawk and Yona, not once, but on multiple occasions. They have tried to hunt down and murder the princess. That has no regard. That has no bearing. That's just straight up assassination murder. That's the part that can't be forgiven. Like, Hawk can't forgive it because it was on her birthday and all this stuff and everything that they did. And he shattered his trust and friendship of Sun Wan, right? So that and, and, and the state the princess was in by making the princess cry sort of idea. He's one of those characters. And that's fine. But you have to look at it on the other side. They were also hunted down for no reason. They were going to kill the princess simply to remove her because she was an obstacle in the way of gaining the, the, the seat on the throne. That was the only reason. So that objective is a bit new. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Like that, that's where this all boils down to. But nobody's bringing that up. That's what I find weird. Um, Zeno just kind of asks Yona at the end, like, what, it's what you want to do, little miss sort of idea. And I like when Zeno gets serious like that. But I wish that that conversation had started longer um, and the end of the chapter had been what Jonas says to Hawk here. But I, I, I feel like this conversation could have had more detail, more depth. And I would have liked Zeno to bring up some more like, oh, here's possibly A, B, C, D. Either way, like if we do this, we're screwed because of this. If we do this, we're okay, but we're screwed because of that. You know, if he had brought up all the possibilities, I feel like this was the time for Zeno to shine because we haven't seen a whole lot of Zeno speaking very often lately. So, and as I said, I always like Zeno. So after this, uh, Yona goes outside. She finds Hawk. She talks to Hawk. Hawk is just, he's just like, this is where you knew. You knew right away once Hawk started talking about leaving. He's like, nope, nope. We're not even going to sit. We, we got to go. We got to get away from these people right now. We don't need to give him an answer. We never need to see him again. We can just leave. I can protect us all. We can leave in the dead of night, blah, blah, blah. Um, and you knew right away that what Yona's response was going to be. And this is where I said you could have taken the, the other parts of this chapter, put them in the next chapter, and extended the Zeno conversation because then you could have ended it at, I'm going to accept Ki Sok's offer. Yona with these dead eyes, this defeat attitude. And Yona, you are a Yona of the dawn. You are the princess. You are not the weak princess that was turning 16 years old in Hyrule Castle at volume one of this series anymore. You are the strong person who straight up caps bitches you straight up you know you murder people you do that stuff for the good of the people you kill people when they're evil you do that stuff you put the arrow in the guy you are stronger than this you you know you broke down with Sue one you stopped breaking down in front of him and stuff you have grown you gave away the hairpin you you know stood there facing Kiso being with surrounded by soldiers saying kill her you've stood your ground and be like is this I, where's this disrespect coming from you Stop what you're saying right now. How dare you say that to me? You know who I am. You've stood your ground against all these odds. And now for her to have this defeatist attitude. Oh, and especially even the way she, she says it. Look at the panel. Her dead eyes, her, her head down throughout most of this chapter. Her head down, her eyes dead. She's, I don't like, I don't like it. I really don't like it. It might, don't get me wrong. The story will get interesting as a result of this, but no, no, now's not the time for this. And I just feel like uh, there could have been something better to situation to put her in this hard position where she still kept her private. Now it feels like she's being overwhelmed and she just feels like, like we're back to the volume one Yona, not, not, not this Yona, you know, and Hawk is just completely, of course, beside himself. He's shocked. He's just like, what? And here's where I'm feeling the tension is going to start. 
I don't think Hawk is going to go along with this. This might be the breaking point because it would bring more tension, of course, back to their relationship because Hawk and Yona, of course, now they know they are, they are in love with each other and stuff and we thought it would be all sunshine and rainbows, but you got to throw a wrench in there, right? So I think this wrench will, of course, be the return with Soon Wan and we'll see Yona's feelings for Soon Wan resurface and stuff like that and it'll be, that'll be all back and, of course, Hawk was fine with it before but now it's twisted, blah, blah, blah. And I think Hawk, I think Hawk will go to the castle and if they decide to, but I think Hawk will end up leaving. I think Hawk is finally going to say, like, no, you have your four dragons and stuff. I'm, I'm going back. I'm, I'm done. I can't be around this. I can't be around you. This is too painful. I don't accept this. Like, that's the problem. This is the breaking point. This is where, where I was talking about, where Hawk's, Lord Hawk's, the Thunder Beast's bloodlust is just, like, he can't accept this. He cannot accept this. He'd rather straight up murder people. He'd murder everyone who ever harmed any of the dragons, who harmed Yona, who harmed Yon. He would straight up murder all of them if just Yona said, go. So, this is, this is really, this is a very trying scene and I'm feeling the tension from it and I don't like it. I don't like where this is leading, like not in a bad way, in a good way, it's going to add... It's got the feelings coming up, and you're like, oh, oh, it's like that uncomfortable when you're watching that show, and it's like that uncomfortable scene, like, when are they going to find out? When is she going to find out? You know, that kind of idea, right? So that, to me, is what's going to happen here. I think it's going to strain the relationship, which just kind of started after all this time, the romantic side of things. Uh, it's truly started with their feelings out in the open, and I feel like this is going to be the big wrench, because, and it looks to be that when Hawk says, you know, we don't need to do this, you don't need to do this, I can protect us all. I want to straight up murder everyone involved with this. I cannot forgive what he done. We, we cannot trust him. This is like ridiculous. You know, he, while we were celebrating your birthday, he was murdering your father. Like, I can't accept that. And he says, I don't care who comes after us. I will protect us. I can protect us all. I will protect White Snake, Droopy Eyes, you know, Zeno, Yon, Shin Ah, you. I will protect all of us. I will do it. And he's just he's just beside himself and stuff. And this is where like Yona like looks down and she like hugs him and stuff. And he and Hawk I think it's Hawk saying, if only I were stronger, sort of idea. Like if only I, I think this is a double meaning. I think he's also hoping like if he was even stronger, I mean he's the strongest warrior in the series, you know. Him and Zeno going at a go would be interesting. But he is the strongest character as far as I'm concerned in the entirety of this series the strongest warrior we've seen and he wants more power because he wants more even more power to protect everyone because people have still gotten hurt while he's been a part of the group people have still gotten kidnapped so and he feels probably like this is his fault Yona wouldn't believe in anything the advisor said had all of what he said not been true the dragons have always been under attack assault their powers wanted they've been kidnapped and tortured and blah 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 and all these things have happened because, and Hawk probably thinks, well, I'm not strong enough to protect them from that in the first place. S similar to how Yona feels the guilt that the advisor is seeping into her mind. And the other thing is, if he's also saying, if only I were stronger, he might also mean like emotionally. If only he were stronger to be able to handle this calmly. But he knows he can't. He's questioned it multiple times. Yona stood in front of Sue Wan and acted normal. Hawk cannot do that sort of idea. He's just, that's just not the way, and he doesn't think he can. Nobody expects him to, I don't think. And I think all the dragons, I think everybody heard it by the looks of all the solemn, uh, you know, on the faces. I mean, it's just a small tent, and they're just watching the other sides. So I think they all heard him, and they're all thinking kind of the same thing. Like, this is, this is, I, I, I'm so excited for chapter 179. Like, that's the thing about this. Even though it's uncomfortable, I'm like, oh, I don't agree, I don't agree. But it doesn't mean it's a bad story. I don't not agree with the author taking this direction. I'm just curious about where this direction is going to go. If there's intrigue to it, and I'm excited to read 179. Um, we also just get a little thing of, of uh, Yona flashbacking before the end here. And she's thinking about all the happy days that like, they've been having this whole time, where they finally all got together outside camping, Yon being the mother figure, you know, uh, them fishing, Hawk and her just training with the sword in the morning, their morning routine. And she's thinking about how fun those days were. And basically, those were the happiest days of my life. And I don't think we can go back to that anymore. And it's like, no, you fucking can. Like, in my opinion, you can. You run back away 
to uh, one of the other tribes or stuff. I mean, there, there is a massive amount of places that they could go and they can just keep doing their traveling, keep doing their wandering, keep their hoods up sort of idea. There are plenty of villages. I don't think they've ever even been to the Earth tribe yet, um, that area. So they could still go to all these other villages and still be doing good and stuff and just helping out. And just they could still be camping in the woods and finding new mountains and new forests and new stuff. They could still be going around helping people. I, I think this is a very defeatist attitude on Yona's part, and that's just not in her character. So I'm excited to see what 179 brings, as I said. Uh, that's basically the end of the chapter, end of the review. What did you guys all think? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Please like, subscribe, comment. As always, it's always very much appreciated. This has been Griever with your Akatsuki no Yona chapter 178 monthly release review. Uh, drink responsibly as always, and we'll catch you back here next time for the latest Behind the Bar reviews next week.